Hello everyone and welcome back to Destiny. Today Bungie held the first of three live streams giving us their first glimpse into Destiny's final content update and live event, Age of Triumph. The event will focus on celebrating the past through our Guardian's achievements over the past three years and will be documented in Destiny's largest record book yet. In the stream, they went over the details of the record book and what we can expect from all of the game's raids, which have now been bumped up to 390 light with refined experiences, current light gear, and of course, new loot to earn. It all makes me warm and fuzzy inside, so let's jump in and learn more. Today they began by introducing to us the new Age of Triumph record book. As I mentioned earlier, this is Destiny's largest record book, as it should be, because it will chronicle all of your Guardian's adventures and achievements over the past three years. The book description reads, This book is the companion to the Age of Triumph. Celebrate your victories against the darkness and write the record of your triumphs in light. The book is 13 pages long, has 7 ranks, and is filled with emblem rewards and a special coupon which I'll go over a little bit later in the video. The first page of the record book shows all of the emblems that you can achieve by ranking up in the book, and the other 12 are each dedicated to a different milestone category. The 12 pages of milestones are Commemoration, which will honor those who have been there since release and have continued to play through all of the game's major releases. The second page is Story, which will act as a checklist for your completion through all of the game's story campaigns like the Black Garden from Vanilla and Regicide from the Taken King. Next is Titan's Will, tracking the progress of your Titan. Next is Hunter's Way, which will track your progress of your Hunter. Next we have Warlock's Path, which will track the progress of your Warlock. The next page is Strikes, which will track your performance through Destiny's Heroic and Nightfall Strikes. Then we have the Crucible, which will track your progress through the Crucible activities. Next we have Raids, which is a very special page because it will be the completion of the raids that have been raised up to 390 light, which have all been injected with new challenges and loot, and we'll go over that a little bit later in the video. Next we have Collections, which tracks things like Emblems, Shaders, Ships, and Sparrows. They did mention that you don't have to get every single ship and shader to be able to complete this page, only a good majority of them. Which is good since they want you to be able to complete this book without having to have necessarily been there for every single live event that might have had unique stuff. Next up we have Wanderer, which is rewarding the explorer inside you for finding things like dead ghosts and discovering the remnants of things like the original loot cave, which I got a big kick out of. Next we have Allegiances, which tracks all of your reputation gains with things like Cryptarch and different factions. And then we have the final page, which is dedicated to Trials of Osiris, which of course tracks your achievements through that activity. Now the first page of Milestones, called Commemoration, features a unique emblem reward for each of the milestones on that page, and the rest of the pages will have one emblem granted on the 8th milestone for completing a certain number of other milestones on that page. For example, completing the first seven nodes of the story page will unlock the eighth node, which will grant you the emblem, whereas a page like Trials of Osiris will unlock the eighth node once you complete at least six of the seven on that page. And that brings us to the detail that you won't need to complete every single milestone to get all of the rewards. Of course, to get an emblem like App Precipio, you will have had to have been there during the first three months between Vanilla and Dark Below. But even without that, you can still get up to rank 7 and get all of the rank up emblems, which was a great move on their part. Now, of course, there were a ton of really interesting milestones to go over, and I'll save that for a future video where we can go in in much greater detail. But moving on to the other topic of the livestream, which is raids. Age of Triumph will feature the return of Year 1 and Year 2 raids, Vault of Glass, Crota's End, and King's Fall. The key details here are that they will be introduced over the first three weeks of the event through a revamped featured raids node on the Director. The raid will always be accessible at 390 light after that, but of course it won't grant you any of the Age of Triumph loot. When the raid is featured for that week, all challenges will be unlocked for that raid and will also present you with new Age of Triumph ornaments and gear, along with what sounds like 400 light raid gear. The one hint we got is that we will definitely be getting a 400 light Vex class, which I am very excited about. They have also confirmed 400 light raid armor. This is of course music to my ears, as the Vault of Glass raid set is still one of my favorite sets in the game. Now of course they were quick to tell us that the conversation of weapons and specifically elemental primaries will be one for the sandbox update reveal in two weeks. 
It might just be that the topic has multiple facets that would best be explained all at once, so I'm definitely very excited and a little anxious to see how they will handle it. Either way, I'm definitely a fan of this system. It is part of what they are calling the weekly rituals, which looks like it's going to be more than simply director shortcuts now. Of course, they will be talking more about this next week, but it looks like they're preparing these weekly rituals so that players can avoid becoming overwhelmed and can focus in on activities that will grant you 400 light gear. Let me know what your first reactions are to the Age of Triumph in the comments below. I think it's shaping up to be the perfect book end to Destiny 1 before we jump head first into the world of Destiny 2. Of course, I will be covering all of these topics in greater detail, so be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Bungie is also featuring a special item that will unlock by reaching rank 7 in the book, which will essentially grant you the ability to purchase a special Age of Triumph t-shirt from the Bungie store. This shirt will feature the Age of Triumph emblem and your gamertag or PSN name on the sleeve, just like it was with the Year 2 Moments of Triumph shirt. And speaking of shirts, I wanted to show you all a design that I've been working on for my first piece of merchandise. Some of you have been asking about merchandise and how you can support the channel, so I wanted to start exploring that area. I set up a quick YouTube poll to gauge your thoughts, so if you don't mind participating, hit the I in the upper right hand corner and let me know what you think of this design. The shirt features the throwback version of my text logo and will feature the official logo on the back. I'll be making alternative colors and designs available when it goes live, but I want to get a quick pulse check on what you think of this design. Anyways, drop a like if you enjoyed this video, and I will see you all next time. Until now, we could safely assume that we would be able to import our Destiny 1 characters into Destiny 2, but we didn't know to what extent that would be in reference to things like gear and collectibles. Today, we've been given a much clearer picture, and for Destiny 2, we will officially not be carrying over character power, possessions, Eververse-related items, or currency. 